Yo, what is going on guys, it's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can simplify your setups and make quick tuning changes just before a race without having to test them and pretty much know that your car is not going to be undrivable. So let's get stuck into the video. So okay, here we are in the setup guys and basically what I'm going to show you guys is what you can change and basically the, the quick version of what most of the stuff in the setup does. Um, Pretty much I'm going to show you the effect of what something does without getting too drawn into the details. Some people just play the game casually and might just want to make a few little changes here and there to improve the setup that they have at the time. Um, so I'm going to do the tires and say the electronic stuff last. Um, this is just safe setup by the way. It's just a default setup so it's not actually a proper setup. But anyway, let's get stuck into the main part. All this sort of stuff we know that we want brake pads on one if it's just a short race stuff like that so don't worry about all of that but now let's say you're you know you've done a qualifying session or a practice session and you're about to jump into quality or you're about to jump into a race and you haven't got time to sort of you know test real setups and you you, you already felt in the practice session before or in the qualifying session before that there were certain things you didn't like about the car so let's say for instance that your car was mad understeery and you want to make a change just before the race but you're not going to get to test it so you have to sort of bank on you know your your changes being correct okay um so let's say this is the setup that we had and the car felt very understeery so let's have a look the main parts i'm going to show you is the mechanical grip and the aero right so wow this safe setup is terrible by the way absolutely terrible do you know what let's let's start with a let's go with an aggressive setup because i don't know what that setup actually is right but um so let's say this is the setup that you have and the car feels very understeery now the basic um measures that i try to enforce now is i don't make more than two clicks of change so if i have a setup that even i wasn't happy with at least when you're not happy with a setup you still you still have got used to it you've got used to the characteristics so you don't want to make something drastically different because you could turn to the corner and then the back end just snaps and that's that's your race over. So what I do is I don't make more than two two clicks on, on anything. And that's pretty much what I try and enforce when I'm, you know, making quick changes towards a car. Um, so if my car was understeery going into a race, the things that you can change, you could either go down on the wheel rate like this, maybe two clicks down make the front of the car softer. Or you can go maybe a click up on the on the rear wheel rate, also the bump stop rate. This is gonna make your car more oversteery, particularly in like the, the fast corners and the fast stuff, right? But then the cons to that is the car's probably gonna slide more. You're probably gonna get more wheel spin, especially if your, your bump stop rate is a little higher as well. You're gonna get a little bit more wheel spin. So if your car was like seriously understeery, then for me, I, with the wheel with the wheel rate on the rear um i wouldn't go too too crazy with that for me normally around one click but i do run normally quite a soft um rear wheel rate in the ferrari anyway but um if you're in another car maybe one click don't go don't go too crazy with the, the rear wheel rate because your car will literally transform and it'll, the back end will be all over the place right um again if it was the other way around and your car was mad over siri then you can reduce the, the rear wheel rate. You can reduce the rear bump stop rate, bump stop rate, and that's going to give your car a little bit more stability on acceleration and through the fast corners as well. Um, you can make the the front wheel rate stiffer. The only bad thing about this is if you make it too stiff, then it can actually affect your braking. When you hit the brakes, you end up locking up and not being able to make certain corners and stuff like that. It, it activates the abs more so you can't you won't slow down as quick so you have to be careful with that as well but all in all um the the rear wheel rate and bump stop rate is going to make your car more oversteery the front is going to make your car well, i'd say more stable but more understeery as well so if you sort of go higher up on this expect more oversteer um expect the back end to be a little bit harder to tame when exiting corners and traction and stuff if you go softer, then you're going to have more traction. It's going to be more predictable, but it's going to be more understeery. So that's pretty much that simplified. Now let's go on to the 
anti roll bars and this is pretty pretty quick and easy let's say your anti roll bars are like this and um this basically means the, the back of your car is going to be soft and it's going to be more lethargic the front of your car is going to be very sharp so this tends to turn into tight corners this is more about the slow corners so going through slow corners slow chicanes the front of your car is going to be very agile while the back is going to be lazy when you get on the power it's going to be very soft so it actually is a little bit better for for traction but then the car is very sort of unbalanced if you go too far with your, your front end being too stiff now um this is though going to help you get through the corners but let's say your car is well oversteery the rest of your setup is super oversteery so when you're going into a slow corner your car is like sort of sliding into it then what you want to do is you want to invert your anti roll bars you want the rear to be higher than the front and this is going to make the car much more um lethargic at the front end so it doesn't sort of the front end doesn't sort of snap and you can sort of live with it more but then you're going to get more wheel spin as you accelerate out of the corner and the car's going to become more understeery through the slow corners but some people use stuff like this to balance out their setup maybe they've got a setup that's very oversteery but for the slow corners they make the 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 rear anti-roll bar super stiff and the front very soft and then that gives a lot of understeer to the front of the car so it makes it a little bit more um you can live with it a little bit more if it's too oversteery but again you have to be very careful um because you can gain a lot a lot of wheel spin coming out of the slow corners with having high rear anti-robot now let's get on to the preload now the preload this is one thing you probably can make more than two click changes on i'm just going to simplify it like this if you have max preload um off throttle it's going to be a little bit more stable but when you get on the throttle you're going to have more more wheel spin on throttle going through fast corners because your tires your wheels spin at can spin at a different speed but off throttle it's more stable okay off throttle you're going to get tons more understeer now if you go the other way um off throttle is going to be way more oversteer but on throttle this is going to give you more understeer it's going to push your car wide because your tires are spinning your wheels are spinning at the same time so if you've got an inside wheel that's obviously going around the corner the distance on the inside compared to the outside is slightly shorter so the wheels are spinning at the same time this is going to be a little bit more under Siri when you're on the throttle but again it's going to give you more stability when you get on the throttle the wheels are not going to spin at different speeds so it's going to it's going to give you more stability but it's going to give you more understeer but if you've got an oversteery setup already then it's fine okay but if you're if you're if your setup is um mad over mad understeery then it might be a problem on throttle okay but off throttle um this is going to provide you with more stability when you're off throttle and you've got oversteery setup it's going to be a little bit more stable as you're going through the corners but just know that when you do put your foot down on the power your wheels are going to spin at different times so you will get more wheel spin so that can be quite difficult um going to the dampers now the dampers is something that i never touch before a race because it's you you can literally make yourself undrivable by messing with the dampers so i never ever touch the dampers if i'm if i just want to make quick changes to to a car i literally just leave them okay if i've if i had bad dampers before it's probably my fault for not changing them beforehand but if you're just making quick changes i don't touch the dampers i leave them but if you go over to the aero now for the most part most of the time you're running max wing okay and let's just say your your ride heights so let's say this is your ride height and you're going into a, you've gone into a practice session or a quality session and during the quality session you felt the car was oversteery or you know the back end sliding around a lot what i tend to do is i don't make massive changes to the rear ride height maybe if it was too oversteery i'd go down one click but i feel like sometimes um especially when the car's oversteery sometimes i'll just go up one or two clicks on the front ride height and it balances it out a little bit more um because you can now but back in the day when you used to add more front ride height the car used to handle terribly now it's not as bad it feels okay okay but what i would do um don't go crazy changing the rear ride height maybe one click difference maximum okay 
Don't go too crazy. Remember, you can also affect the way how the rear of the car feels with the with the wheel rate and the bump stop rate. So you don't have to go crazy with the um crazy with the rear right eye. Let's say the car was mad oversteery. I actually, if the car's oversteery, I tend actually not to even touch the rear right eye. I pretty much use the wheel rate to fix an oversteery car more than what I would do with um, a rear right height. Because with the rear right height, I feel like if you just go up on the rear right height too much, and there's, there's kind of like, if it's too oversteer, there's nothing you can really change that can affect that, you know? So I tend to leave it where it's at and just literally use the wheel rate, put the wheel rate and the bump stop rate down. If it was crazy oversteer, I put that down, not, not the bump stop range, I won't touch that. And I tend to, to put those like very soft and I'll leave this and then maybe add a clicker front wing. That's that's about it, right? But I would never say just go super low like this because you just you just completely mess yourself up like that. Even if you did that and then added a lot of rear wheel rate, you're still the, the balance isn't gonna be right. The balance definitely isn't gonna be right. You're still gonna be too understeering, okay? And you can still you can you can do what I've just done there and still find out you've got loads of wheel spin still. So I tend to move around the wheel rate on the rear, leave leave the the uh, rear right height as it is. As I said, you can go up on the front by one or two clicks just to balance out the car a little bit more. Because the higher you have the rear right height, the more oversteer you're gonna get. And a lot of the times, if you go too far, as soon as you turn into a fast corner, you're just gonna spin out from the rear. There's not you're not gonna be able to do much. Um, with the rear wing, apart from maybe Monza, Spa, uh, Paul Ricard, I, most of the time I'm on max rear wing. I don't see the benefit of running like 10 rear wing or 11, especially if it's a longer race, it just kills the tires. So for me, I don't see the benefit in it. A lot of the time with ACC, it's more about how you get out of the corners, um, which depends on your, your top speed. So if you're running max wing, most of the time you're going to get out of the corners pretty well now onto one of the main parts and this is something that i never actually knew when i first started playing this game and it was only maybe a year in where i actually actually um was told how it actually worked now i'm going to go on to the tires now let's say my tire pressures which are obviously wrong because it's just aggressive um, it's just an aggressive setup but let's say these are the perfect tire pressures for the conditions that we have so it's 16 celsius air 22 track right let's say these are the perfect tire pressures and these are the pressures that were perfect in qualifying but we go into the race and instead of it being 16 air and 22 track it's now maybe 20 air and 29 track so what most people do they think okay it used to be 22 track now it's 29 so i need to go down by seven clicks but actually in acc you work off of the air temp not the track temp so Forget how much hotter the track temp is, you go off of the air temp. So if the air temp was only four Celsius hotter, then you only have to go down by four clicks on your tire PSI. And even if it's the other way around, if the if it was 16 Celsius and it's gone down to, I don't know, 10 Celsius um, air temperature, then you know you have to go up by six clicks. And that's pretty much how you can figure out your tire pressures without having to do too much testing it's a bit of a weird one because i always thought it went off of track temperature but it actually goes off of air temperature so um make the adjustments it's general simple maths if you're not good at maths then grab a calculator <laughs> okay like whatever the air temperature is or whatever the air temperature is changed by that's how much clicks you have to go up or down so remember if it goes hotter by if, if the air temperature is hotter by i don't know three celsius then you go down three clicks if it's cooler by three Celsius, you go up three clicks. And that's the air temperature, the air temperature, not the track temperature. So remember that guys, don't do it off of the track temperature because you're gonna end up with completely bodged um, um, PSIs for your race, all right? Anyway guys, that's about it. Just a small basic changes. Well, so actually, let me get into the tires as well. Let me quickly do the toes and the cambers and stuff. Generally with the cambers now, we still know that a lot of the time we're running our cambers on zero zero um you can still get away with running quite high negative toe on the front 
especially in the Ferrari. Um, I'm not going to say it's the same for all cars, but in the Ferrari, you can get away with it. Um, now, let's say, I don't know, let's say that the front of my car or the rear of my car is still feels a little bit, you know, not really moving around, feels lethargic. You can maybe a couple of clicks on the toe, but don't go too crazy. Don't go too crazy. Whatever, whatever toe settings you had, even if it was more like a minus 1.2, if you feel like the car on the rear is not moving, a couple of clicks up. If you feel like the car was sliding too much, a couple of clicks down. Don't go too crazy. Don't change the car too much so you don't recognize it when you're driving it because that's what's going to lead to mistakes. Um, again, as well, if we quickly go to electronics, always make sure you have a, um, a hotkey for your ABS. You might be able to change some things on the fly. And um, obviously, if you go more rearwards on your brake bias and stuff like that, stuff like that is going to is gonna help you, man. So make sure you've got brake bias set up as a hotkey so you can change that when you're on track. Um, also, your traction control, make sure you've got a hotkey for that. We don't use TC2 anymore. So with the Ferrari, let's say just in the Ferrari, for instance, right? Let's get rid of the ECU map. You want to... You wanna, change from five to seven those are the two main um tc settings in the ferrari so you want to try five to seven if you're having trouble coming out of corners just stick it to seven all right just stick it to seven there's not that big of a difference you may you may lose maybe a tenth or so tenth and a half but what you lose in in overall time over one or two laps you're going to gain in comfortability and stability over a stint so make sure you have these hotkeys set up, guys. I can't stress it enough. You need to make sure you have hotkeys set up because you can manage your race so much better on the fly if you have things like TC set up. Um, obviously, you can use the MFD menu to change your ABS settings and your ECU settings, and stuff like that. Um, have a hotkey for your brake bias. It makes a difference. Whenever I do a race and then halfway through my stint, when the car starts, to, sometimes it feels like it's struggling under braking, I might put you know one or two clicks towards the rear and then it eases up for a little bit so just make sure you have all these things already ready to change um through a hotkey or a button on your steering wheel but that's it guys cryptic tnt like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace